You have to use the XLS read command because it's an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> I refuse to type. There we go. Okay. So I probably should have called it something like X. Someday I'm going to learn to type, but <laughs> all right. Even I'm beginning to lose patience with this. All right. Is that spelled right? All right. So I created this thing called data. Okay. I read this spreadsheet in, right? I just issued this command here, and I got this data here. This shows you the limitations of printing things out to the screen. This is not a very big data set, but it's, it's... So you can see first column is time, you see? So that's the first experiment, then you start over with the second experiment. They're stacked on top of each other. That's the cell concentration. You see this NAN. Does anyone know what NAN stands for? Not a... Not a number. So what that means is that um, they didn't measure that at that point or maybe the device was broken. So there's just no data point. That means there's no data right there. MATLAB knows how to deal with that. You don't have to worry about it. Okay? And then this is the amount of penicillin produced in grams per liter from the experiment. Okay? You can see these, t it tends to work like as time increases, there's a big increase in the amount of cells and penicillin at the beginning and not so much at the end. And that's why you stop. Okay? And then there's a second experiment. Okay? So your goal is to create plots that look like what I'm about to show you. Of course, that's... MATLAB makes such little um, labels. Sorry. Okay, what have I done? I've created two plots here. So I pl this is for the different experiments. This is cell concentration versus time for each of the two experiments. And this is the penicillin concentration versus time. Okay. You see, I've labeled them because they're data points, I don't want to connect the I don't want to connect these points together because you don't connect data points because the, nothing happened in between. So uh, you can issue a I'll show you how to issue a command that just does symbols at each of the points instead of a line that connects them. And so the, this shows again cell concentration in the blue is for the first experiment, in the green is for the second experiment. Same thing for the penicillin here. Okay. So you're, you, what you what you're supposed to try to do I'm not I'll tell you how to do it at the end. Because I have, if you're quick, I have the solution. Okay. Um, so the way I do it is I don't give you guys a solution in the notes because I used to do that. And then everyone cuts and pastes from the slide. That's what I do, right? Cut and paste from the slide, hit return. They're like, I got it. It was easy. Okay. So try to figure this out. Obviously what you want to do, so this is what the data sets um, look like before they're stacked together, right? Time. This is for the first experiment, cell, penicillin, second experiment, time, um, same times cell penicillin, okay? So what you have to do is do the kind of manipulations I did in terms of, um, let me see if I want to be nice and get you started. And uh, la, 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 la. Okay, le le let's just do this. I'm gonna get an error here because I'm copying stuff that MATLAB won't like, but that's okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is issue this command, right? That creates the vector x. That's all the data. Three columns, as you can see. 34 entries, okay? Now, I happen to know if you compare the slide I gave you with the data to the, um, to the file you uploaded, you'll see the first 17 rows are for the first experiment. If you count it down, you see there's 17. And then the next 17 rows are for the second experiment. So what I'm going to do is, tr is create two different vectors that separate the data, okay? And so I issue this command. So what this command does is it says, please create a vector called x1, x for the first experiment. Um, that's the cursor. <laughs> that's an equal sign. So in that vector, please put the s first 17 rows. That's what this means. 1 through 17, all columns, all three columns, okay? And if you issue that command, well, if you do it without the semicolon, that's the first data set. All the times, cell concentrations, penicillin. So then what you want to do is do the same thing for the second data set. Once you've seen this for the first data set, it shouldn't, shouldn't be too hard. Because you just have to create a vector, let's call it x2, that's the next 17 rows. Okay? 
and then try to plot those two things. Okay? So let's so that's enough help. Let's see if you can let's see if you can do it. If you have a problem, I'll help you out. You already have a problem. That's quick. <laughs> yeah. So I've been trying to export this um, Excel file into MATLAB, but it won't put in the XLS format. It'll put it into some other format. So either X, HTML, or PDF. Oh, wait a minute. So, so go to the website. Okay, Cl click on that thing. What? Let's see if it's like it's right, but what? But you don't want to download it into a web page. You just want to download it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I did beforehand. See. Okay, now, so, so hold on. So are you on a, are you on a Mac? What are you on? I'm on a freeware version. It's like library. Okay, right. Okay, uh huh. All right. So, but it knows it's an Excel spreadsheet or what? Yeah, it just converts it over to its own yeah. Excel setup. Oh, well, that could be a problem. I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I assume it's compatible. With Maybe what you could do is, is create it mm -hmm. and then um, try to change the extension to XLS. Okay. Maybe, yeah. I'll just go over here. So you go, um, I got one graph down. Hmm? I got one graph down for that concentration. Do you want the pencil and one and the same one or is it different? Different one. Now, those are. So show me how you did the plot command. Oh, I did spider. Uh, so where did you get the thing called cell concentration? Um, I just, I, uh, I uploaded it and I just created three different rows. Oh. I think it's a new thing, it just does that. So. Uh, Okay, because on the uh, for the cell concentration, there should be two different experiments, right? Right. So there should be experiment one and experiment two, and you want to indicate those with different symbols. Oh, I see. I see what you? I think you have all blue circles for both sets of experiments. Yeah, right there, right? Yeah, but if you go back to your plot, I bet you have thirty-four circles. I do. Yeah. And so that you can't tell experiment one from experiment two. So you want to create the vector somehow so you can plot them to have different symbols so you can tell the difference between the two experiments. Okay. Yeah. So it should, it should look like this, right? And in a minute, I'll give you the answer, but you should at least try. If, I, if you don't try, then you won't learn. Right, so what you've done is you've... Uh, You've, it looks like you've plotted maybe the cell concentration, but for both experiments with the same symbol, right? So the problem with that is you see how I did it? I have two different symbols. You can tell experiment one and two apart. Oh. Yeah, but you can't tell them apart. Um, that's because... I have like the Y1 is the tennis and then the Y2. Right, but see, that's why I want you to separate them because if you plot them as one vector, then it will plot all the data, but you can't tell the difference between experiment one and two. That's why I created two vectors called, I created a vectors called x1 and x2, um, so, that, so that x1 was the first experiment with three columns, and x2 was the second experiment with three columns, so I could tell the difference between the two. How would you like hold, how would you like create another graph? So you could type figure if you don't want to overwrite that one. And then it'll create a new figure window, hit return, and then you can start plotting in that one if you like. So what a lot of people are doing is they're, they're plotting the data all right, but they haven't separated two experiments. So for example, they're getting all circles. So there's no way to tell experiment one from two. 
okay? That's not really what you want to do. I could have done that, <laughs> okay? So if you just plot, if, if, let me just show you, and then I'll show you the example, and then, I mean the answer, and then we'll go. If I just plot, if I don't do any manipulation at all on this problem, so I called it data, I think. No, I called it x, right? So if I plot like x, Oh, holy. Sorry, that scared me. <laughs> so let me put some symbol. Red, that means red circle. Okay. Okay, so what I've done is I've plotted all the data, but it's for both experiments at the same time. They all look the same. So if you want to tell the difference between experiment and one and two, you can't, right? So it did work. It plotted all 34 data points versus time. But underlying this is two different experiments, and if you, if you just do this, that's why I separated them into these two, right? That creates a vector called, and that has the first experiment, and then I created another vector. It's a matrix, actually, X2 with the, with the second experiment. I think that went to 34, like that. And then the rest of it goes like this, okay? So once you have the two things separated, where's my little pointer? So all the data for the first experiments in this matrix called X1 for the second experiments in X2, then this command does what? Well, it says, please plot for the first experiment time, that's time, this is the cell concentration. Put a symbol X there for that, it sh okay? And then do the same thing for the second experiment and call that a circle. That way you can tell the difference between the two data sets. Otherwise, they all look the same, okay? And then I label it, big deal. You can issue this, if you don't like to over, you don't want to overwrite this, you can issue this command. This will pop up a new window where you can create a new plot. And then you can do the same thing for the, for the penicillin concentration. The only difference being you plot the third column versus time, right? That's penicillin. You label the first experiment with an X, second experiment with a circle, label, and then label it, all right? So anyway, we have a couple more minutes. If you want to play around, that's fine. If you have any questions, let me know. Actually, we have one minute. <laughs> so ask quickly, work quickly. So, yeah. Is there a way to what? I can't, uh, not that I know of. Yeah, because PDF is a graphic image, so it's not, it's not a data format. Yeah. So that, I don't know what your, your, what your program is doing. But I think, I think when you use that command XLS read, it assumes it's a .xls file. If it's not, it probably gives you an error or something like that. So it has to have the right extension, I would assume, because you don't specify the extension. So when I export it, do I just do penicillin.xls? Yeah, I don't know what it's currently saving it as, but if... Yeah, it has to have an XLS extension. You can also just click on the file name and type .xls probably. You can change extensions. It's risky, but you can do it. Yeah, yeah. Now it should work.